We've come to the campus of the University of California, Irvine, to meet with one of the giants of memory research, Jim McGaw. Jim has spent most of his long and distinguished career finding out why, among all the memories we form, some are vivid and indelible. Uh, let's take the extremes. The extremes are easy. Uh, I'm sure that all Nobel Prize winners know exactly where they were and what they were doing when they got the news that they won the Nobel Prize, and yeah. they'll never forget that. Yeah. Uh, I'm equally sure that people who pick up body parts after an airplane crash mm -hmm. will remember forever mm. having seen that. And uh, when this is described by them, they call it, uh, it's etched in my mind. It'll be there forever. I'll never forget this. It's ingrained. It's, it's welded into my brain. These are the kind of expressions that are used. So at the extreme, whether it's highly joyful or whether it is terribly disgusting uh, and, and, and annoying. frightening? Frightening, but it doesn't have to be frightening. It, it, it can be insulting. It can be insulting. Uh, I could say to you, which is not true, but I could say, you know, I've read some of your stuff. Uh, it's not as good as it used to be. Uh, you might give that some thought. <laughs> now, if you believed that I had said that, yeah. you'd remember that forever. Yeah. I mean, and what did it do? Was that frightening to no, you? No, as a matter of fact, every actor and probably every writer can remember every bad review he Ab or she ever got. Absolutely. Word for word. Ab I can tell you word for word my first bad review. What makes these memories stick is their ability to arouse our emotions. Gun. In this experiment, a volunteer is watching slides while her emotional response to each one is measured. An injured boy. But the kicker will come after the slideshow is over. Can you name this slide? Decomposing dog. The experiment was designed by Jim McGaw's longtime collaborator, Larry Cahill. What does she know about this experiment? Um, that's good. She thinks this experiment is about emotion. Mm -hmm. So she thinks she's coming to an, an emotion lab where she's going to be shown a bunch of different slides of varying emotional content. Snake. And then immediately after she watches them, we're going to stick her arm in a tub of ice water. The reason we're going to do that is because this is a technique that's well known to activate the body's stress hormone response. Mm -hmm. And we believe that the body's stress hormone response acts to enhance memory. So by sticking her arm in ice water, immediately after she views these slides, we should be able to enhance her memory. <sighs> How long can people take this? Uh, many people, uh, myself included, are wimps. They can take it for about a minute. <laughs> yeah. You know, what's amazing to me is that you're doing this thing with the ice after she looks at the pictures. She doesn't have to have her arm in there and be getting that, that burst of hormones during the time she's looking at the pictures. It's afterwards. Right now, she's just recently acquired all this new information, 20 slides. But her brain is busy storing that information. We call it consolidating, kind of like jello setting. During the setting process, you have the opportunity to activate the body's stress hormone response. And the stress hormones work on the newly forming memory to enhance storage of it. Go ahead and remove it. Very good move. Just go ahead and put your arm here and rest it. I'm going to have a three minute rest period. Well, during this time I will continue taking measurements. Molina endured the ice water for a full three minutes. How did the uh, ice water feel? Horrible. Yes. Absolutely horrible. So you, you had an emotional response to it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. When subjects in the experiment are tested a week later for their memory of the slides, those who had the ice water treatment, like Melina, remembered the emotional slides better than control subjects. Somehow, the stress hormones had helped solidify the memory still forming in her brain. Where does it take place in the brain? What do, do these stress hormones uh, wash and activate? Right. All right. Well, we've done a lot of work in that regard. And in fact, there's one region in particular that has been identified as absolutely crucial to these effects. And it's a, a region called the amygdala. This person here would be facing towards you. And uh, his or her amygdala is located uh, about a half an inch in to an inch in uh, either temporal lobe. It's about the size and shape of an almond, and amygdala happens to be Latin for almond. It's no coincidence that the amygdala in both rats and humans 
is nestled right next to the hippocampus. And it's the hippocampus, of course, that sets up the networks of associations in the brain that constitute a memory. And the hippocampus is doing its job, and the amygdala comes in with a punch and says, this was important, do more of what you're doing. Uh, Consolidate that more strongly. Yeah, yeah. So learning can occur without the amygdala, yeah. but it's not going to be very strong. And you would remember everything equally. You would remember everything equally, which the, is a very bad thing. The death of your mother would be equal to where you put your car keys. Absolutely. OK, and let's go. But it turns out that not even all emotional events are necessarily remembered equally. It may depend on whether you're a man or a woman. Several years ago, Larry Cahill had subjects watch movies of emotionally arousing events. What I'd like to do now is to lay you down on this bed and... Um... Immediately afterwards, their brains were scanned to see how their amygdalas responded. Recently, Larry reanalyzed the results of these experiments and discovered a puzzling pattern. In men, emotional events turn on only the right amygdala. In women, only the left amygdala is activated. Now, there's an old hypothesis that the right brain processes the gist of events, while the left focuses on the details. So, let's say a man and a woman are having an argument. Uh, did you pay that bill? I did pay that bill. You never pay bills. I always, I do pay the bills. Well, wh whichever one is saying this about the other. The next day, if they say, let's go over what that was we had a problem with. Is it possible that we might expect the, the, the two of them to have a different way of remembering either the gist of it or the details of it? I would say it's entirely possible that while they were in the middle of that argument and the emotions were flowing, their two brains were not storing that information in exactly the same way. They weren't using the exact same parts of the brain, and they weren't storing exactly the same information. So after an emotional fight, if they've both been emotional, she'll tend to remember the details, and he'll tend to remember the, uh, the gist of it. Go this ahead. is cutting edge stuff. This is, this is the kind of stuff that makes people say, really? Uh, I, I, <laughs> That's a good okay. definition of cutting edge. Yeah, right. <laughs> Are you right. sure about that? <laughs> right. But the cutting edge is the place I like to be.